And that's the end of Disaster Week Movies. Starting Monday, it's Love in the Afternoon Week, and we'll have our first special mother contestant. We'll have our winner for you. Now stay tuned for Newswatch 16 next. Good evening, I'm Nolan Johannes. And I'm Karen Hart. Tonight in the news... I'm Kathy Bellish, and I'll be back in a moment with the whole story from North Scranton. A windy mountain road, trucks full of dynamite and steep banks. What do people have to say about it? I'm Craig Stevens. I'll let you know. Those stories plus Tom's weekend forecast. And Joe Zone tells us why one local college team won't be going to the playoffs. Newswatch 16 is next. In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Pilot Jack Rulin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is News Watch 16. In Scranton, a project that is supposed to prevent mine cave-ins is still on hold tonight. Up until a few weeks ago, crews were working in North Scranton on a mine flushing project. But neighbors complained about all the dust and dirt from the truck, and the city stopped the project. So far, Scranton officials haven't been able to reach an agreement with the federal government on a cleaner way to fill the mines, and no work is being done. And now, as Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellis reports, another problem may be opening up in that same neighborhood. I was taking my son home from school, and I was just running up the, uh, the sidewalk, and as I was running, my, uh, I tripped. And when I tripped, I looked back, and there was a hole in the ground. Joe Burke of North Scranton is talking about this hole that opened up on Clearview Street right near his home. His six-year-old son Joseph says he's glad that he's a fast runner, otherwise he might have fallen in. And that's just what's worrying the principal at the Neil Armstrong School here in North Scranton. Joseph Doyle says he's taken precautions so that none of his students accidentally fall in. We have a crossing guard right at that corner, and we'll be sure that the crossing guard does not allow any of the children over in that area. And in addition, there's only two or three families that live th up in that area anyway, so the number of children that would normally go in that direction would be normally very minimal. There will be no quick action to fill this subsidence. It seems since the mine flushing project in this area is at a standstill, there's a controversy over whether federal or city money and manpower will take care of this. Because of all the confusion, mining officials say they won't know until next week whether they'll be the ones to fill in this hole. As to when the work will be done, that's anybody's guess. Kathy Bellish, Newswatch 16, Scranton. Scranton DPW crews tell us tonight they've filled another opening in the ground on the city's west side. Crews were out today filling this hole that opened on Geraldine Court. That's in the area near the 500 block of North Lincoln Avenue. Officials still aren't sure what caused the subsidence. And DPW crews say they'll wait until they hear from mining officials before trying to fill this opening on Monroe Avenue. Officials say mines in that part of the city were flushed, but the rain may have washed some of that fill away. Ever since a tragic drowning in the Susquehanna River last February, volunteers have been working hard to form a river rescue unit in Hanover Township. Today, Newswatch 16's Mark Davis reports they got their first river rescue boat. It didn't look like much being unloaded from the salesman's car, but for these volunteers in Hanover Township, it was a sight they've worked hard to see. This is the river rescue boat the group's been trying to buy since February 20th. That was the day 15-year-old Paul Goodstein of Wilkesbury drowned in the Susquehanna River, despite the valiant attempts of Skycam 16 and numerous fire, police, and rescue crews. The idea for a river rescue unit with a special boat came from Police Chief Richard Uren's frustration of not being able to save Goodstein. Now, just a little over two months later, the boat's a reality. It just goes to show you what a little effort can do when you organize together and work together and not work against one another. Uh, it's really great. I can't say enough. The boat is only part of what's happening with the rescue unit. 18 men are now in special water training at a local high school pool. Once uh, we complete the sessions down there, we will be taking this boat out into the lakes and uh, do our training out there. Uh, after that, we will be going into the river. The money used to buy the boat came from local organizations and individual contributions in honor of Paul Goodstein. 
With the boat purchase, you may think the fundraising part of the River Rescue Unit is over, but it isn't. Still to be bought has to be a radio as well as an engine. That's going to take several thousand dollars more. After that, they hope to put it in the water by Memorial Day. It'll be called Second Chance, because they feel here in Hanover Township that it truly will give anybody in the river a second chance. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Hanover Township. We'll tell you why some Columbia County people don't want another business in their area. Trout Rodeo for Kids tomorrow. The Environmental Protection Agency is admitting tonight that it made a mistake last weekend concerning the Yakavazi landfill in Old Forge. As we showed you from Sky Cam 16 on Sunday, workers were busy digging at the hazardous waste site looking for barrels of dangerous chemicals. At a meeting that night, this is what the EPA told the people of Old Forge. We're pretty confident now that metals that the magnetometer picked up were scrap metals, refuse metals, things like cans and old car parts. Newswatch 16 has since learned that the EPA only dug down 10 feet at the Yakavasi landfill and that metals were detected electronically as far down as 50 feet. EPA now admits it made a mistake by telling people the barrels are clumped in one area of the landfill and that means the threat of hazardous wastes may be greater and more widespread. No word tonight on whether the EPA will dig in the other areas of the dump in Old Forge. It's an explosive situation in Columbia County that has some people concerned tonight. Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens says it's all over plans to truck TNT through town. This field in Greenwood Township, Columbia County, may only contain a lot of Christmas trees right now, but in a few months, it's going to contain a lot of explosives. That's because the Gulick Explosive Company out of Setter County plans to locate a distribution center right here for their explosives, and that's got a lot of people who live just over that hill upset. That's because trucks carrying dynamite would have to travel a steep, windy mountain road, a road people around here say is treacherous. We don't need any more traffic on this road than there already is, considering there's children that ride their bikes and play, and it would just be too much. Just down the road lives Kim Beagle and her family. She, too, doesn't want the dynamite trucks around. Scared. I mean, I have children that plays around here all the time, and... They're putting that right up over the hill, and it's not, it's not, you know, it's too scary. It's too close to home. <sighs> of course, not everybody living in this area is concerned about dynamite trucks traveling this road, and even the dynamite company itself says there's absolutely no danger to anyone. Still, to some people, that's little consolation when the trucks would be driving along a road with a bank this steep. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Greenwood Township, Columbia County. Our chief meteorologist, Tom Clark, will be coming up next with the forecast. And I wonder what the weekend looks like, Tom. Well, that's the big question. Will the sun shine tomorrow and will it rain on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Huh? Answer those, to those questions uh, from the backyard when we come back. Roses are red and violets are blue. To all of our mothers, WNEP loves you. To make this Mother's Day special, WNEP wants to honor our mothers by sending them flowers. During the week of May the 7th on Dialing for Dollars, I will deliver a bouquet of roses to five special mothers. If you would like to nominate your mother, send her name, address, and phone number to WNEP TV 16 of Volca, Pennsylvania, and tell us why she is so special. Enjoy, enjoy. The controversy over a $45,000 water tank in Scranton has taken a new twist tonight. We've been telling you that Scranton's mayor wants to buy the 80,000-gallon tank and use it to help bring water to the East Mountain section of Scranton, where there's been a problem with low water pressure and fighting fires. Well, that plan has to be approved by PG&W. Newswatch 16 contacted the utility today, and we were told they have not been approached by the city of Scranton concerning the water tank. And even if they do get word from the city, PG&W engineers would have to study the situation before making any recommendations. So it looks as though plans to use the water tank are on hold for a while. Well, I wonder if we should put plans on hold for the weekend. I one hope with not. Tom hinting that perhaps there might be rain, there might be sun. Come on, let's let's talk All about right. it, Tom. Give me a few minutes. We'll explain <laughs> it for you. Just noticing the buds getting fatter on the crab apple tree here. It won't be long before this tree's in full bloom. Hey, I had a, a lot of rain last night in this backyard, just over an inch. I measured this morning to be exact 1.16 inches and some places down by Allentown got over two inches of rain but outside now we have just a fine drizzle falling let me show you the current readings outside we have the uh, temperature standing at 57 
With the humidity at 72%, uh, the wind west at 14. That's a chilly wind, by the way. The barometer is rising from 29.3 inches. The range in temperature 64 and 51. Since midnight last night, the record high, uh, well, they didn't have air conditioning back in 1913. The high was 90 degrees. Now that's a shot there of a fire tower and a communications tower down in Delano in Schuylkill County. Gray skies down there as well. The Newswatch 16 color satellite picture, no severe weather over the Southland today. And that's a good thing because there's not much left to destroy after more than two dozen tornadoes the past few days. Some heavy thunderstorms out at sea, uh, some clouds over Pennsylvania. The Kentucky Derby tomorrow, late in the day, I expect in Louisville, dry weather for that event. Temperatures in the 70s at race time tomorrow. Rain will be coming in there tomorrow night, however. Hey, uh, they're having some of the hottest weather in the month of May down in southern Texas. Air conditioners humming away down there today. Look at the clear skies, 106. The nation's hottest temperature in Catula, Texas, right about there. But the jet stream winds over the weekend coming in like so across the country. Uh, storminess developing out that way will bring our next chance for rain, and that could come in here late in the day and on Sunday and into Monday as well. But we should see some breaks in the clouds tomorrow. Not too bad heading through the weekend. Now, here's the forecast for tonight. Uh, a shower or two, some drizzle, a few sprinkles, a cold breeze as well. If you're heading out this evening, take along a jacket. 45 in Tawanda, the low, 44 in Simpson, in the middle 40s in Nanakoke, Jim Thorpe, Salem, Snyder County, Jersey Shore, about 44 tonight. Now, tomorrow, an improvement over what we had today. Uh, more clouds than sun, however, but at least we'll see the sun. The wind coming in from the west. Lenox, Susquehanna County, 59 the high. Wyoming, 63. Stroudsburg, the middle 60s. Also in Minersville, Lewisburg, and Williamsport, about 64 degrees. I expect lower humidity and a rise in air pressure tomorrow. And biometeorological studies show that people feel fewer aches and pains. So the resistance to aches and pains on the high side tomorrow. Good day to jog, exercise, sunrise and sunset. There it is, 5.58 and 8.06. From the top, a cloudy sky tonight, a few showers and some sprinkles. Let's call it partly sunny tomorrow. Again, more clouds than sun, but I'm looking for a dry day tomorrow. Good day to get out and cut the grass. 63 the high, 61 on Sunday, a mostly cloudy day. Some rain possible by Sunday night, but I think most of Sunday will be dry, showers and cool weather Monday and Tuesday. If there's any changes necessary into that forecast, I'll have it tonight at 11. All right, okay. we'll tune in. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Joe Zone next with the big play combination that might bring Pitt a national championship. Plus, getting ready for the Kentucky Derby. Sports is next. <laughs> Serving all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WMEP-TV. An 80-year-old Wilkes-Barre building where they used to bottle beer has a new owner tonight. The Stegmeyer Bottling Works, vacant for the last nine years, has been purchased by a West Pittston man for $225,000. Clifford Melberger says he'll renovate the inside and employ eventually 20 new workers for his record storage business. Wilkes-Barre officials are still trying to find a developer for the main Stegmeyer Brewery itself. A lot of people in the sports world are probably concerned about a development today, right, Joe? Yeah. This is one that hits home if you play high school sports, college sports, if you're part of uh, the sports administration. Whoever thought that a pinch-hitting appearance five years ago would end up costing the Wilkes College baseball team 18 wins in a possible conference championship? I know one person who didn't think so, Kenny Sork. Sork, a former 16 Sports Star of the Week and the all-time Wilkes College home run leader, appeared as a pinch hitter in a game against East Stroudsburg five years ago. You're only allowed to play four years in college, and therefore Sork was ineligible to play at Wilkes this season. He did play, however. He led Wilkes to 18 wins in an MAC playoff spot. But none of the wins count because Wilkes used an ineligible player. They must forfeit all of the games. They're all losses, and they're out of the playoffs. Now, you're probably asking the same question that I asked. How did this happen? Well, according to the athletic director at Wilkes, John Reese, both Sork and then baseball coach Dave Kachak were asked if Sork had played back in 80. Both said no, they did not remember him playing. Well, league records indicate Sork did make a pinch-hitting appearance, one, as a freshman, one time. Juniata found out about it, initiated an investigation, and that's why they're going to the playoffs 
and Wilkes isn't. The school, however, is responsible for keeping such records. But there was some confusion, I'm told, by Reese when K. Jack left three years ago. Now, what can officials at Uniata be thinking about when they take away another team's championship because of a technicality? My goodness, I hope those Uniata kids aren't bragging about how they won an MAC title. I'd be embarrassed if I were part of that program, almost as embarrassed I am sad for the 25 Wilkes kids who had their title stolen away. Had a chance yesterday when the Pitt people were in for the Golden Panthers banquet to talk with quarterback John Congemi and wide receiver Bill Wallace. It's the one-two combination that could mean big things for the Panthers this season. They sure were effective last season, specifically against Penn State when Congemi and Wallace teamed up for three touchdowns. Wallace caught 10 passes that day for over 170 yards. All totaled 45 receptions for the year, more than 700 yards, and he's expecting more this fall. Coaches worked us hard in the spring, and uh, we had a good attitude about it. And uh, we know a lot of, a lot of teams uh, are going to be tough this year for us, and uh, we're going to be on TV a few times, and we want to show the nation what we can do, and uh, we're getting excited for it. Congemi's story is remarkable when you consider that when Pitt season began, he was the number three quarterback on a three-quarterback team. But by the second game of the year, Congemi had taken over, replacing an injured John Cummings. All he did was complete 170 passes for over 1,900 yards and 16 touchdowns. And the best news of all, Congemi is just a junior. What was the biggest thing you took out of last year that you'll bring with you this season? Uh, just, the, just the game experience, just being in certain situations. You know, I think out of all our regular season games, we came down to the last quarter and in the last minutes. And, and in certain games, I don't, I don't want to do the same things I did, you know, if, if all possible. To, Pitt head coach Foz Fazio is concerned about a defense that was decimated by graduation. But the offense with Congemi and Wallace as the big play people appears to be as sound as ever. Well, tomorrow is Derby Day. That's the day when everybody becomes a horse handicapper. The best three-year-olds in the country, including Van Landingham. Boy, if he's down the stretch, the announcer's going to have a baller. In Louisville for tomorrow's Derby, the favorites, a pair of fillies by the name of Althea and Life's Magic, they'll take on the likes of the big Colts like Swale. The two fillies are the five to two shots of the favorites. Swale is three to one. You know, only two fillies in the history of the Derby have ever won it. I think we're going to see our third tomorrow. I am picking Althea to win the Derby with Swale finishing second. That's all of it. Give tonight your best shot. I'll see you at 11 o'clock with NBA playoffs and baseball. You're sure about that Kentucky Derby now? You've checked with the weather and the forecast. It's not going to rain at all. I'm going to go with the ladies. Ah, good. All right. That's Thank good. you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. News Watch 16 continues with a celebration of spring. It's a story of trees and blossoms, and we'll plant that story as News Watch 16 continues. Everything from whitewater to black powder to beavers, biking, and bows, from copperheads to whitetails to casting, calling, and crows. You'll see stalking fish, fixing poles, rainbow trout, and snowy owls, setting traps, drilling holes, earthworms, and waterfowl. Whether you're a fan of the eagles, browns, bears, or giants, or of Joe and Stan and the Mountain Man, or some Tom Duck, or Harry, watch hiking, frying, riding, tying, skiing, and flying on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, Saturday at 7. Finally tonight, a sign of spring to help brighten up this rather gloomy day. The Greater Wilkes-Barre Chamber of Commerce is kicking off its 17th annual Cherry Blossom Festival. And what better way to do it than plant a new cherry blossom tree right in downtown Wilkes-Barre. A whole weekend of activities are planned, including entertainment on Public Square beginning at 11 tomorrow morning, and the popular River Regatta on the Susquehanna on Sunday. Sounds like fun. Water that tree. Keep it growing now. That's <laughs> News Watch 16 for this Friday. Be sure to join us tonight on the update when we'll have the latest on the mine search in Llewellyn. And also the story of a special honor for an area business. ABC's World News Tonight is next. For the team, thank you for being with us. Enjoy your evening.